Hi, this is Mr. Mulek for KMTChemistry.com. This video is a quick addition to the bonding review video. I forgot to talk about intermolecular forces. All matter is held together by certain attractive forces between its particles. The type of attraction and the relative strength of the attraction differs on the type of substance you are observing. Metals are held together by metallic bonding, as we saw in the last video. Ionic compounds are held together by an electrostatic attraction. Both of these are very strong, leading to very high melting and boiling points use substances. Covalent compounds don't have full charges, so they have much lower attraction, but there are still some forces that hold them together into the liquid into the solid phase. The first of which is the dispersion force. The dispersion force is a weak attraction that you see in any covalent molecule. The dispersion force comes from a temporary alignment of electrons between two molecules, causing a really weak charge. Now, in any given molecule, the electrons, even though they're shared in a bond, are really moving around between the two atoms constantly. Now, if we were to stop and take a picture, say there, that it's possible to get the electrons to one side or the other, in that moment creating a very, very weak partial charge. If in that moment when a partial charge is established, another molecule of hydrogen were to be near this molecule of hydrogen, the electrons in the molecule on the right would be pushed away by the electrons in the molecule of the left. Now doing this would induce another dipole in the molecule on the right, causing two very weak, very temporary dipoles that might cause an attraction. Now when you start the electrons moving again, the electrons start shifting back to the left because they need to average out, and you, you get this synchronization pushing and pulling between both pairs of electrons. Nonpolar molecules show this the best, and the strength of the intermolecular force increases with the number of electrons. The more electrons you can shift, the larger the partial charge, so the larger molecules will display the greatest force. Polar molecules exhibit the dipole-dipole attraction. This stems from the fact that because your molecule is fully polar, there is a permanent plus and minus end. So rather than looking at a molecule like this, I'd rather look at it as a giant dipole like this. Now when you have multiple dipoles near each other based on average kinetic energy, the particles are probably going to move every which way. However, the positive and negative end of one molecule can attract the positive and negative end of the other, aligning the opposites and causing a strong attraction. Some examples of polar molecules are shown here. These forces will increase uh, when you have a more polar molecule. The final intermolecular force I'm going to mention is the hydrogen bond. Now, it's not really a bond, and it's actually mostly just a very, 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 very strong dipole-dipole attraction. It is strong enough to be classified separately from the dipole-dipole attractions. A hydrogen bond comes about when you have a HO, HN, or HF bond. You're looking for two elements that have a very, very large electronegativity difference, which is going to cause a very polar bond, which causes a very, very high partial charge. These partial charges are so high that they're close to ionic in magnitude. Now, we're only going to look at one of these polar bonds here, the OH bond going horizontally. But as you can see, when two of these molecules come close to each other, the negative end of one oxygen will attract the positive end of one hydrogen on individual molecules, causing a strong attraction between them. Note the difference between the covalent bond and the intermolecular force. Any molecule that has an HO, HN, or HF bond anywhere in its structure will exhibit hydrogen bonding. To sum things up, the predominant intermolecular forces you see in your molecule are determined by molecular polarity and what atoms are present in your molecule. Nonpolar molecules only have a dispersion force to help them stick together. Polar molecules, the predominant intermolecular force is the dipole-dipole attraction. And for polar molecules with HO, HN, or HF bonds, hydrogen bonding takes place. Even though it's said that hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force, remember that intermolecular forces only hold together covalent compounds. The forces that hold together metallic compounds and ionic compounds and the actual covalent bond within a molecule are all stronger by comparison, even though hydrogen bonding is the strongest of the intermolecular forces. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching.